It's the 6th of October 2022 and we're looking down on Venezuela down here and the coast of northern South America. Got a big spiraling blood of cloud which the National Hurricane Center is now issuing advisories on and calling potential tropical cyclone 13. So far this year in the North Atlantic, we've gotten down to Hurricane Ian. And so the next storm will be called Julia, but it depends on whether this is the next storm or whether one of the other disturbances reaches tropical storm strength before this one. The other candidate is Tropical Depression 12, way out to the east. But is there any chance that will develop into a tropical storm? Well, let's check it out. This is Tropical Depression 12, and here are the Cape Verde Islands down here. And if we skip forward, we'll see that this storm is in fact not really forecast to intensify. So it doesn't look like a good candidate to be called Julia. In fact, there it goes, it's done by Sunday. So it looks to me, and let me know if I get this wrong, but it looks like 13, because it's very likely to become a tropical storm at least, and quite likely to be a hurricane, it will be Tropical Storm Julia and potentially Hurricane Julia. The National Hurricane Center currently have the storm developing into a depression and then a tropical storm as it passes into the over waters of the Southern Caribbean Sea and does intensify the storm to hurricane strength before making landfall in Nicaragua. There are considerable uncertainties due to the indistinct nature of the initial circulation and the large amount of land that's going to be playing a role in the storm. Let's take a look at it. Right, well, we've got to start off with the Hurricane Wharf. Go big to start. And it has the low center off the coast of Venezuela over the, the waters. It's fairly distinct in, in this model, but in, in fact, the National Hurricane Center aren't sure whether there is a, a center over land or whether it is here. But anyway, let's go with this and see what the H wharf does with the storm. It does take it along the coast, no real development until Friday. And then as the storm passes over the warm waters of the Southern Caribbean Sea on its path towards Nicaragua, the storm does intensify and becomes a broad tropical storm. And yes, there is there are those hurricane force winds at 64 knots and the hurricane wharf is taking it slightly to the north of the NHC track. It looks like it's right on the border of northern Nicaragua. The time of landfall in the hurricane wharf is 15 UTC Sunday, October 9th. Looking at the other model tracks, it does look like the hurricane wharf is on that run on the northern edge of the forecast envelope so you can see why the National Hurricane Center have the storm coming more directly in towards Nicaragua. Here are the winds at 500 hectopascals, that's 5,500 meters above sea level approximately. And you can see there is broad scale ridging and the reason this is important is because it's forcing the storm or the developing system towards the west and let's just check how that changes. Obviously, it doesn't change too much or the models wouldn't have those those tracks. So as we go forward, the ridge is, is still here, dipping down right into Central America coming coming up. So that there is no chance that this storm is going to go well north. It's just going to essentially be on that very, very steady west track while that ridge is in place and that's why it's going so prominently into Nicaragua according to the European Center model which is shown here. Here are the three deep, three day rain totals. As you can see the track is very evident of the system moving across and along the north coast of South America. It does pass over the Guajira peninsula so we're expecting very heavy rain and potentially tropical storm conditions in this in these areas as the system moves through
as the system passes into the southwestern Caribbean Sea, it's going to be moving over an area of water that has the capability of supporting a Category 5 hurricane. This isn't surprising. It's usually in this state, almost always in this state at this time of year. But it is obviously a concern. There needs to be something to hold off the storm rapidly intensifying to become a major hurricane. And one of the things that will could hold it off is the fact that it just doesn't have enough time over the waters to really develop into a major hurricane. But this is something of concern and should be always kept an eye on the possibility of a rapid intensification to a major hurricane, which could be devastating for Nicaragua or Honduras. The current model guidance does not indicate that the storm will become a major hurricane, but the earlier experimental guidance, the Hurricane Wharf, did reach Category 3, which is major hurricane intensity, prior to landfall. It is an outlier, but certainly a concern. So there you have it. It's certainly a concerning storm. Currently, the immediate impacts being heavy rain and gusty winds over these northern coasts of South America. This is Venezuela, and then into Colombia will experience an increase in rainfall and thunderstorms. But the big question is what will happen over the southern portions of the Caribbean Sea? We know the water is very warm and the models indicate the formation of a hurricane. The question is, will it rapidly intensify before landfall? The countries at risk at the moment are Nicaragua and Honduras. But particularly Nicaragua seems to be in the path of the consensus track. We'll definitely have to check back on this one, so I will try and do some more videos later. See you in the next one.